everybody. So today's video is not a tutorial, but it's a video about uh, an, an app I've been working on for the last three days. And I want to talk about the process and the approach I took in order to build this app and the struggles I faced when I did so. And yeah, maybe you find this helpful. And it's also some kind of special because of the 500 subscribers I've got since yesterday. So thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel as it uh, motivates me to um, do even more uh, tutorials. And so let's head over to uh, the app now. Uh, so Snack is a Slack clone made in Race 6 within three days. And if you're not familiar with Slack, it's basically an um, app where you can create channels and rooms and other people can uh, join these rooms and then you can talk in or chat in real time uh, with each other. So uh, as far as I know, uh, a lot of teams are using Slack. So they give you also the ability to add uh, third party plugins, for example, GitHub and things like that. And obviously I didn't went for this feature. I just tried to implement the uh, core uh, feature uh, which means uh, the channels, the rooms, and also the ability to talk with uh, each other in real time. So this is the landing page in my app and uh, it's just the static page here. So uh, over time I will probably add here another section. And while I'm pretty happy with how this all turned out, uh, I oftentimes find myself struggling adding styles to an app. And it's not like I don't know how to use Bootstrap or uh, that I don't know what margin or padding means or how to use them. But uh, I think it's also a lack of experience. So that's definitely something I want to get better at. So let's click here on sign up. And this will redirect us here to the sign up form from device itself. And I all I did here was basically just to eject the views in order to be able to style uh, the form. So I just add the standard bootstrap form group and that's it. And as you can see, it's still the uh, standard path here. So I didn't change here anything at all. So let's sign up a new user here. And once I click here on sign up, this will redirect us here to the channel's new path. And if you're familiar with device, normally device redirects you always to a root path. So I had to customize the device and how it redirects users once they have signed up uh, in order to uh, achieve this. And while I did that, I looked up something in the device documentation. And I found here on the uh, GitHub repository of device something new. That I wanted to share with you and it's this wiki tab here so I don't know how long it exists or how long it's been there uh, but I just discovered that and it's basically a, a small wiki uh, made just for uh, the uh, the repository and so in this case for device and I highly suggest you to check that out because this uh, is really helpful uh, for especially for beginners but even for advanced uh, users because they have here a getting start link, a link to documentation on RubyDoc. Uh, they also have how to articles here. Currently there are 128 articles. Um, they even have here example applications. So again, definitely check that out. And I find it really awesome that um, GitHub has now implemented this, this kind of feature because this is, this is really handy to be honest. And so, yeah, I had to uh, customize the way device uh, redirects users and that's pretty much straightforward. Um, and so I did this uh, because on Slack, it's pretty much the same. So once you have signed up a user, uh, they redirect you to a page where you can create a new channel. So that's why I went for the same setup. Um, my first thought was actually to add that here to the uh, sign up form, but that would have been much more work um, to do because uh, with that I would need to um, change the, the way uh, device uh, passes data and things like that. So not only was this in my opinion the better option to add a separate page for that and redirect users to this page, uh, but it's also much more easier to do. Uh, so let's create here a new channel called um, maybe code base camp, create channel. And this will redirect us to the uh, rooms path here. And this is basically the main layout. And I don't I don't use here any modern front end tech or whatsoever. This is all done in Rails uh, and JavaScript. And I use a lot of partials to pass down the data. And so here we have the channels and currently we don't have any rooms. So let's create a new room quickly. 
let's call this one tutorials and so this will create a new room and redirect users directly to the room so as you can see we have now entered the room uh, with the id of one and here i can already type in something inside the input field and send the message and this will render immediately here inside uh, the browser without refreshing the browser and that's obviously because i'm using action cable for that so if i open up here the inspector uh, from chrome you will see that inside here the console we have a payload uh, with the message and also the user information so i do and pass all this data um, in javascript uh, as suggested in the official uh, race documentation and currently there's one bug um, as you can see the date is undefined uh, so i have to figure out how i can render the uh, date correctly uh, when i just pass it through a javascript uh, but whenever i refresh the app you see that it takes the uh, post the data from the database and that's why we get the correct date so that's a small issue i still have to figure out but overall it works and if i create now a new room here and call this one for example um, gaming news doesn't really matter and create here a new message first of you notice that there is no message yet and so i can create now a new message uh, new message here send message and if i head over now to tutorials you see that we still have just the one message here so i separated the way i stream data to uh, each room and this was actually quite hard to do because um, if i head over here to the terminal quickly you see that i pass here um, the uh, data to the room one channel i'm streaming from the room one channel and if i head over and join the second channel you will see that this changes dynamically to room underscore two channel. Uh, so this was uh, kind of hacky to figure out how to do that uh, because in many, many um, documentations or tutorials that you can find or resources that you can find online, uh, they show you basically just how to join one room channel, including actually, including by the way, also my tutorial I made uh, for beginners in Action Cable but uh, yeah i really had to figure that out but uh, luckily it works now um, and as you can see uh, the data stays there so so because this is real time of course i can make this here smaller and open up here a new incognito and here let's quickly uh, sign up another user the classic john gambo and then let's hit here sign up and so instead of uh, creating a new channel we can also join an existing channel we have currently just one channel called code basecamp which is this one here obviously and now let's head over make sure we're inside the same ch uh, room as the first client and if i type now here in something hello how are you you see that it will uh, appear here inside this browser and also on this client so send message and there we go and so of course i can respond uh, i'm fine how are you and so this will render it on both sides so this is all real time as you can see without refreshing the browser or anything now if i head over to uh, the uh, second channel here and type here in something as the second client while i'm still uh, on this client uh, inside the first room uh, you will see that the message are separated so when i say how are you again you see uh, that the message appeared inside this room but not inside the first room where this client is in but if I head over to gaming news, I will see the message here. Even though, even though this client was in the first room, he's still able to see the messages in the second room because every message that is being sent to the server is also uh, injected to the, to the database. And so with that, I have basically uh, tried to implement a message history because um, you don't want users to join a conversation without a message history so if there is a chat for example going on for a longer period of time and someone new signs up he will be able to see the message history and we have full control over that 
uh, how long the history should be and things like that and a very tricky part was actually to separate the uh, data how it's displayed once we sent it via action cable because I had this bug going on that uh, whenever I send it a message in any room uh, the message appeared in every second room in every other room as well which was obviously not what I wanted to do and it turned out that it was a JavaScript issue I had or actually a bug uh, so I could was able to figure it out and it also had something to do with turbo links okay so that was also an issue so again there's not really a lot of documentation out there especially when it comes to race 6 and the new Webpacker pipeline which is why I uh, did this project to learn finally also more about it and yeah I'm pretty happy uh, how it all turned out and so let's sign out here quickly and sign up a complete new user. So test one, test.com, password. Let's join the existing channel. And even though we have just created this new user, um, he can still view all data. So again, this is the message history and that's exactly what you can also uh, see on Slack. So uh, you can uh, read the message history and, and uh, try to understand what they're actually talking about and things like that. Um, so yeah, I also created profiles. So each user has a link uh, to their profile, um, which is currently uh, not completed as you can see. So it still needs uh, work to be done. but. Yeah, but yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy how it all turned out. It was quite a lot of work, especially in three days. But I would say that's just the speed of race. That's uh, why I always recommend learning race because with race, you can literally do things like that uh, completely alone. So you need to keep that in mind that I made this completely on my own. Uh, I copied a lot of styles, so this, what you can see here, is taken for, from, from a code pen, I think. Um, I customized it, of course, but just like I said in the beginning, I want to get really better at, um, at web design itself. Maybe this was for you informational, or maybe uh, it will inspire you to build something on your own. I think that would be it for today. Hope you enjoyed as always. And again, thanks for everyone who has subscribed to my channel. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye.